Welcome to Republican Roundtable. I'm your host, Max Reimer. We find ourselves a couple of weeks removed from the election. Our last episode, we covered pretty in depth what we thought happened here at the Republican Roundtable. And as Republicans, we are trying to get a few more perspectives on what actually happened and what we do going forward. With us today, we have a member of the Somali Caucus of the Republican Party of Minnesota, an activist in his own right, Abdi Mohammed. Abdi? Thank you for joining the Republican Roundtable. Thank you for having me. So, let's start with, for our viewers, who you are, what your background is, and what your involvement is with the Republican Party. Yeah, uh, so I am a uh, conservative activist and some, sometimes commentator, like here. Um, I have been uh, active in the party in the last year, you know, a part of different groups like the Young Republicans, uh, as you mentioned, the Somali Republican Caucus, uh, affiliated with the state uh, party. Um, as well as just, you know, kind of active in my uh, local BPOU and, um, and on the ground. Uh, and, yeah, I would say pretty active there. Now, your specific BPOU, where is that located? Uh, Woodbury. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So let's, let's rewind a, a couple of weeks. I alluded to it earlier. We were both at the, the Minnesota Republican supposed victory party. Yeah, we were, yeah. Uh, there was not a lot of victory that happened. Yeah, there was a lot of gloom and doom <laughs> in there. Yeah. In your assessment, um, you have very unique backgrounds in a number of different facets, being part of this, uh, this party and this organization and being an organizer yourself and a lot of rights. What do you think happened? I, how, taking the pulse of the state of Minnesota, what went wrong? You know, I, I think we saw a lot of optimism going into the election, um, and, and it wasn't uh, undeserved. I think we had a lot of confidence looking at the uh, the job numbers that were coming in the days before the election, the the, the kind of uh, widespread um, kind of enthusiasm that we saw, an uptick in that after the Kavanaugh hearings. Um, so we, I think there was a lot of that kind of wide-eyed optimism um, that really didn't help us when we were taken by surprise in that loss that we had mm -hmm. on election night, uh, unfortunately. Is there something, we, we had a conversation both off air and then we have had num a number of conversations about kind of the, the machine versus the message. Yeah. And I'm curious to get your take on it. Is this a messaging issue for us as Republicans or is it just understanding that the DFL uh, outnumber and kind of outmaneuver Republicans in a number of ways. Is it a combination of both? How, how do you see that in Definitely. the state of Minnesota? Yeah, I, I, think, it's, I think it's both the, the machine and the message. Um, I know the young Republicans were, were touting great uh, uh, voter contact numbers up in tens of thousands, I think 40,000 contacts or door knocks. Um, but I think what it was is the message. If the message isn't received, I, I think it's actually uh, an issue of the interpretation of the message, right? Okay. You, it's this kind of game of telephone where Republicans are touting their policies and their ideologies and their principles, but on the end, what it translates to for the voter, the potential voter, is something much different than what is you know intended to. So Democrats have been pushing this message that Republicans are trying to get rid of you know health care. Uh, with you know, uh, you know, preconditioned, uh, um, you know, with with issues um, mm -hmm. that people have with asthma or, and whatnot, you know, at that point, what we see is that you know, uh, it's our messaging not really hitting the ground as we intended to. Okay, so what what is it about? And and being mm -hmm. a, a newer activist and actually bringing some fresh insight into this party is something I think that we all mm -hmm. uh, want from new activists and new people that we're bringing in with different backgrounds both professionally, ethnically, whatever, whatever mm -hmm. that might be, what, what can we do to improve the general tone of the message? Yeah, there's, there's definitely a lot. I remember hearing one statewide candidate, I'm not going to name names, but uh, they were asked um, over the radio, what is your ground game looking like in the metro area? Um, and they immediately pivoted to their, you know, their act, uh, activity in the suburbs. So they, they didn't really specify an urban message, and I think there's a little bit of a sure. different orientation when you speak to people directly in the metro area than those kind of surrounding it. Um, I think that when you approach folks with the message of, um, you know, uh, having a free market in your health care and, and having uh, more economic independence and, you know, lower taxes, those all sound great, but then people have this kind of... Um, 
notion to, a knee-jerk reaction to asking, well, how are things going to be paid for? And if we're not yeah. explaining these things correctly um, or, or understandably uh, in plain English, then we have people kind of um, bolting the other way. And I think another issue that we had uh, in the state of Minnesota with our, within our own party is that there was a lot of almost using the president and this national tone um, in our politics as a crutch for our, sure. uh, for our politicians or our candidates. So, you know, on a statewide issue, we saw a lot of, you know, Republicans um, attaching themselves to the, to the president. You and I, I mean, we see a lot of good in what the pre president is doing and his campaign uh, in 2016 brought up a lot of issues that I think a lot of people have been wanting to be addressed and might have been ignored by previous Republican candidates. Mm -hmm. um, but as of right now, I'm not, I'm not particularly sure that that was what we needed. I don't think that Trump should have been on the ballot as much as he should have been, and I don't think Republicans should have used him to lean on as much as they did. Because that was the fascinating thing, is you actually looked, and it, not only the statewide races, mm -hmm. which did not go our way, but for us in Bloomington, for surrounding metro areas in Woodbury, yep. um, you look at the, the 494, 694 loop, and yep. we lost independent voices mm -hmm. in the Republican Party who were yep. staples. Yep in their respective community. Yep. So I think you're onto something, Abdi, and it's not necessarily condemning the way that President Trump does his Definitely business. Not. It's not necessarily saying that he's terrible mm -hmm. and he cost us everything because I don't think that that's necessarily accurate either. But tethering your candidacy to the president or to any national figure in Minnesota, yep. it seems to me, doesn't make much sense. Yeah, no, I mean, we can't run a, a statewide campaign or even a congressional or state house campaign the same way that it would be run in states like Texas or Alabama Certainly. or Arkansas, red states. I mean, right now we, we've kind of moved in the direction of becoming a purple state, but we still have these blue roots that are, 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 are fastened in there um, in, in, the, in the state. Um, so I think that right now in the time off that we have, I mean, there's really no time off with campaigns. Yeah, right. We're kind of getting right back into it as we're, um, kind of soul searching here, but I think that one thing that we can figure out is what do our voters want? And I think there's been a lot of talking at voters and sure. kind of uh, kind of a little bit of sophistry that we've had in the campaign, uh, but less of listening and less addressing the concerns that we have on a local level rather than taking this national rhetoric and you know, superimposing it in, in the state. So you had made mention specifically about pre-existing conditions and health care. Yep. It's just, and, and I would say that that was probably a bellwether issue yep. for a lot of campaigns. And then you had also made mention about urban messaging and how we just didn't see a lot of that. And I don't presume to think that Woodbury has a lot of urban messaging no. uh, issues mm -hmm. because there's not, we yep. won't go there. Yeah. Anyway, uh, when people hear things uh, about Republicans' plans for health care, mm -hmm. specifically in CD5, which we got our butts kicked, yep. CD3 to a certain extent as you move closer to Minneapolis, CD4, I'm curious, and I hear quite a bit about people who say, well, the urban core is just lost. We mm -hmm. can't appeal to these people because when we talk about free mar market and health care, when we talk about lowering taxes, when we talk about entitlement reform mm -hmm. or some things that are core values of us uh, Republicans, mm -hmm. what? How do we break through? Because there are people who will say, "Well, people just love free stuff, mm -hmm. and they'll always love free stuff. And if the government offers them free stuff, that's who they're going to vote for." Yeah. We want to paint a picture and we want to have a good message, but it seems to me that it's pretty difficult to overcome that stipulation. Yep. Yeah. How do we? How do we even begin to? to do that. Yeah, I, I, again, I really think it's this on the ground messaging, especially again with pre-existing conditions where we see, I mean, we've seen ads criticizing uh, the Johnson campaign of, of, of putting out this notion that they're willing to gut that uh, within with any, any, any healthcare plan that he introduces into the state, which I don't, I didn't see any evidence for. It was something that was introduced and it kind of goes He literally this, said the opposite, Jeff said Johnson the, said the opposite. As did the president. But they, ta they take this notion that has been uh, introduced uh, through you know campaign rhetoric and then just kind of build on top of that and what I think Republicans can do to combat that is again speak directly with voters even in the off season right so now what we have uh, on Saturday is small business Saturday mm -hmm. and if Republicans or you know potential candidates are not going out into their local municipalities and their local counties and speaking to people on the ground and you know just 
hearing their concerns. You're a small business owner. What could someone do in a political office in order to benefit your business? Take that time. Mm-hmm. Build these community relations. And, and I've seen it all, you know, personally where I see people going to parades, people going to these different events, just even smaller uh, uh, community uh, gatherings. You see an elected official there present, engaging with his community, mm-hmm. and not just taking this as a principled idea in theory, but really in practice. Um, with CD5 and maybe some of these other places, I mean, CD5, we, we lost, what, three to one almost? And, yes. And, and it was, yeah, it was, it, it's brutal. So I, I don't want to say it's a lost cause. I think what we can do is chip away. And the way that we can chip away at some of these, uh, ra- you know, these races and these um, elected offices is just to figure out what some of these people, you know, want, these voters, these potential constituents uh, might be concerned of, again, with safety. Uh, right now we see on a national level that we're dealing with uh, prison reform. Mm-hmm. That's something that a lot of, I think, Republicans could, could back. It is a faith-based uh, initiative on the national level that we could hear, uh, have here to support. Um, but I, I really think it, it, it really comes down to being present in the community, mm-hmm. invisible. I'm always curious when we have guests in, and especially ones that have been active in any given election cycle, to get a pulse for things that you felt went right. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to see the positive in a sea of, well, in a blue wave in many respects. Were there things that the Republican Party improved on that when you started, uh, you, you were observing, and that in this last election they did better on? I think one thing that I saw was a lot of cohesion from the state party in, in, in certain aspects. In some aspects, there was a bit of uh, a bit dysfunction. But um, I think one thing that we understood is what our values were, and that is, you know, individual freedom. Um, again, giving access to the free market, wh- whether it comes to healthcare, whether it comes to education. I think that's one big thing that we can really push uh, for areas in the you know metro or urban. Uh, setting where we see in you know areas like Minneapolis public schools mm-hmm. where there's a deficit. I mean, there's a, a from f- with 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 black students graduating uh, compared to their white counterparts. Uh, there's a huge yes. disparity, yeah. uh, and that shouldn't be. And, and what I think what we can say to some of these communities. I mean, again, I'm Somali. Uh, my family has been here uh, for the past you know 25 years. I came here when I was a, a baby, but. Um, at that point, we've, we're here again a couple decades, but we still are lacking in home ownership. We're lacking in many different areas economically. Um, and wh- what have we been doing? We've been voting Democrat consistently. Mm-hmm. And I think that once we introduce that message to folks that they've been taken for granted, that their votes are almost um, meaningless to the politicians that they select, um, that the only way that they're going to really uplift themselves is to work with folks who are able to empower them uh, directly, um, I don't think that we're going to have any change unless we get that message to some of these folks. So you had made mention of it. Your family had been here for 25 years. You yourself yeah. are Somali. I always, it's always, we had Abdi Kirsi on uh, a few months ago as mm-hmm. well. And there is this idea that you can't be a Republican and and be Muslim. Yeah. And I'm wondering... <laughs> What has that experience been like for you? Because you find yourself in a unique position. You are certainly an activist in this party. You are certainly gaining a name for yourself, specifically in the Republican Party. I'm wondering what you've been met with uh, on either side of the aisle yeah. and what that experience has been like for you. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've been recently describing this as being uh, in between a rock and a hard place, you know, dealing sure. with, you know, some folks uh, within the Republican Party that I hope that there can be some kind of, you know, more inclusive uh, rhetoric and some, um, some reforms there. But also when it comes to uh, my own uh, cultural background and uh, my ethnic community, there has been some pushback against the Republicans, against anyone uh, feeling as though they are uh, due to associate with Republicans because of the idea that Republicans are hostile to immigrants, hostile to Muslims. Um, and it doesn't help when we have had past candidates and you know maybe some others uh, who have been elected uh, support the notion that Muslims or Somali specifically, it's really been a, a focus on the Somali community yeah. more than anything here in Minnesota, um, to be a threat or to be somewhat of a uh, liability. Um, one issue that I have had, again, personally with, with, with uh, some folks on our side is that they will campaign on, on, on Somalis, whether it was the daycare issue that we saw where mm-hmm. hundreds of millions of dollars 
suspicious, suspiciously have been kind of moving around and, and, and went overseas. Uh, an issue that had to be addressed and should be, you know, uh, spoken to with the, with the community. And I think that instead of speaking about the community and not to them, there's an issue there because there are many Somalis who wanted to have that issue addressed. Um, that and of course, you know, when we see issues of uh, young men trying to leave abroad, mm -hmm. that is an issue that the community has been dealing with for, for years now and has been working with, you know, say law enforcement or other elected officials in order to address such an issue. Mm -hmm. But then to uh, kind of broad brush the community as a whole as a threat really uh, undercuts the kind of progress that Republicans could be making if they only um, were to be present in that discussion. I'm concerned specifically about how much damage has been done mm -hmm. uh, already. And again, not even necessarily from, from candidates, but certainly from outspoken activists and things of that nature. Yeah. I remember being part, obviously, of the Republican Liberty Caucus convention this past year that we had at the Dar al Farouk Community Center in Bloomington. Uh, that was met with, with great hostility. Yeah. And I see again, looking specifically at CD5 and, and the urban core and people that we need, we need their votes, yep. period. period um, yeah. there's, there's just no disputing that. Is there, is there, because we're aligned, the Somali community in general, mm -hmm. not to say that everybody believes the same thing at, at the same time, yeah. but there is a value alignment. There is. And I'm wondering if we have permanently damaged a potential relationship for growth there. You know, I'm a bit more optimistic. I think there's there's something that we can salvage there, especially on the uh, social values line with with family uh, family values, traditions, and whatnot. Um, again, a lot of Somali uh, people in the Twin Cities are business owners. They're economically active in their communities and, and creating jobs. Uh, so that's something that I think we can really. Uh, center our messaging on um, but I do I do take issue with exactly yeah when we had the Republican caucus uh, Republican Liberty caucus um, just this past year it was a bit disappointing to not you know to see such a low turnout for something that um, could have brought a lot of great discussion a lot of uh, community cohesion especially at a mosque that was recently targeted mm -hmm. uh, for a hate crime and we see what we see now and and what happened in Pittsburgh uh, I think we should be promoting this kind of not only just interfaith, but uh, communal understanding and, and engagement um, on a, a civic level. Uh, one thing that that I've kind of come to understand, and I think a lot of Somalis are understanding, is that, again, we've only been here for just over two decades, but our future is here. I mean, we're, we're what, we, you know, what they call new Americans. Right. Uh, we're, we're establishing ourselves in our communities. Uh, Ilhan Omar's, uh, you know, and congrats to her for, for being uh, one of the first Muslim uh, Congress uh, representative, congressional representatives, uh, along with. Uh, we can we can yeah. congratulate her and then acknowledge that she's going to be a terrible representative. Oh, yeah, she's going to be terrible. Yeah, I mean, I, in terms of in terms of ho her voting record, I, the, yeah. the one issue I take with Ilhan Omar again to congrat, you know, we we give her 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 due. Shout out to Ilhan Omar. Yeah, <laughs> but one issue that I have, I, I fear that she's going to be voting along with the Democratic base and not in favor of her constituents in CD5. I think she's just going to kind of go along with what the party says and, and not support them. But again, her win and the win of Keith Ellison, shocking, shocking win for Brutal. Keith Ellison. Yeah, unfathomable. But that should be a bellwether to the Republican Party and to any conservative activist who wants to engage with the, um, with the new Americans here, the Somali Americans and other immigrants um, from, of Muslim backgrounds or any background that they have to engage with us or they're going to see more of, uh, of, of that, you know, stake being taken by Democrats. You know, it is interesting. And again, new Americans, we failed with everybody, by the way, as Republicans, not just uh, there was one bright spot and that was Rick Scott in Florida and how he performed yeah. with the Hispanic community. Yeah. Should be a case study, I think, for all of us Definitely. as Republicans. But there are people specifically, it, it's a loud voice, I wish it was not as loud of a voice as it is, who says that Islam is incompatible with our American values. Yeah. And you hear buzzwords, Sharia law, female uh, genital mutilation, mm -hmm. you know, these types of things get thrown about. Not a lot of people understand what, what those things mean. Yeah. Do you, what is your, what is your responsibility in all of that? And not to say that you are responsible 
for those things. But right. as somebody who needs to be both a brand ambassador for one, and mm -hmm. first and foremost, your faith, mm -hmm. uh, second and foremost, your country, third and foremost, this party, yep. where do you find yourself in all of that? What is your responsibility in all of that? The understanding Definitely. that as, as a Republican, we need more people like you. Yeah. No, I, I think you're, I mean, it's, it's a great question. I think, again, more and more as we're getting a stake into this country as Somali immigrants, to only have representation from one side of the aisle, we're going to be losing out on opportunities to have any kind of mobility in this nation. And once there's a misunderstanding or kind of an isolationist view of our community of being, you know, again, with, with, with what uh, some folks um, have kind of characterized us as, you know, uh, a danger to Minnesotans or this nation as, as Muslims here or a threat to the Constitution, which I, I don't know how 1% is going to take over uh, a nation of 300 million plus. But I think that what my aim is in terms of my activism and in terms of my uh, writing and, and, and journalism is more so to address the fact that we're here to stay and that there are more things that unite us than divide us and that Somalis as a whole and Muslims as a whole are adopting uh, American views that are not incompatible with our faith. I mean, our faith really is a more individual-centered, um, spiritual, uh, spiritually guided endeavor rather than this kind of political um, imperialist notion that a lot of people have characterized it as. Um, but I think that a lot more people are, you know, in a way politically apathetic, but they are more mobilized when they hear rhetoric coming from, the, you know, our side again of, 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 of the spectrum politically, when they hear folks calling them a dangerous threat or when they hear mm -hmm. folks wanting to push them out. I mean, we saw uh, early on with the, with the uh, President Donald Trump's campaign about the, the, what he characterized at the time as a Muslim ban, but what really transpired to be a constitutional travel ban. Um, that was then uh, weaponized by the Democrats to churn yes. out a huge majority of, of Muslims. However, again, what we see, what you, uh, uh, you know, rightfully pointed out with Rick Scott in, in Florida was that Hispanics came out to support him. Uh, a third of Hispanics actually supported the president in 2016, mm -hmm. and about a quarter of a Asian Americans also supported the president. And so those communities have been uh, a battleground for a lot of these different uh, um, races across the country. And I, and I would hope to see that kind of competition being vied for by the Republican side and the Democrats and not really just being taken uh, for granted by the Democrats. And some of that messaging that has come from us or a, either intentional or mistaken interpretation, what have you. Yep. I'm wondering, Abdi, we talk more broadly about communities that you're a part of. For you, mm -hmm. is it hard? I mean, do you, do you consider throwing your hands up and saying, I can't help the, this cause or my, my associates? No, I mean, again, I mean, I'm a young guy, but I, you know, once I start a family, I mean, congrats to you for, you know, uh, hoping to lead and uh, follow your lead there. Uh, but once I establish myself in the, in the near future, um, I want to raise a family here that can feel safe, that can feel included in the American fabric. And again, we're recent immigrants, but we, we're building a home here that the only way for us to be a part of that is to be engaged politically in both directions. So, I mean, there are times where I have frustration with my side and, there are times where I'm frustrated with my own community for, you know, almost willfully and, and, and ignorantly kind of voting for Democrats. Not all, also, sometimes there are good reasons they might vote for mm -hmm. certain Democrats on, on a local um, office. Um, however, once we totally choose to ignore one side uh, and side with the other, we give up our... The best way that I can put it is once we see a, a presidential race, a lot of candidates go to Iowa, they go to New Hampshire, they go to Florida and areas of Ohio because those are the swing states. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and if you win there, you're, you're, bound to win in the, uh, you're bound to win the nomination, of course, and then also probably win the presidency. And if the Somali community is not willing to uh, make themselves marketable or at least you know, open to both sides, um, we're going to see ourselves be put in the back of the queue when it comes to any kind of uh, legislative uh, prioritization. Mm -hmm. 
the we got a couple of minutes left. One thing I wanted to touch on was we talked off camera about uh, your schooling, how that's going, and yep. and focusing on communication and digital media. I think those are both yep. long term assets to to help the party and help the cause in yep. general. What's it like in twenty eighteen being on campus? Oh yeah, being a student on campus, I, I tell you, <laughs> I mean, I'm vocal online and I'm vocal when I'm around uh, like-minded folks. But you know, sometimes in the classroom, yeah. I uh, I tend not to uh, speak too much. Just recently, actually, in one of my critical uh, rhetoric classes, um, it was interesting. Uh, we had a guest speaker try uh, his research that he gets paid for, by the way, by you know by the university, is to study how uh, sci science fiction films and their kind of um, progression to create aliens in a very scary and much more threatening way, going from E.T. to kind of what we see today, um, correlates directly with our rhetoric on illegal aliens. So the scarier the aliens are in movies, the scarier our politicians refer to illegal, uh, aliens. illegal aliens. So I, don't, I, I, I didn't understand that. That's um, what your tax dollars are going to, people. Yeah, so unfortunately. <laughs> Um, but it, it just really makes me more motivated in terms of really, again, with, with, whether it's with young people, whether it's with new immigrants, I do think there is a disconnect in our messaging mm -hmm. uh, from the Republican Party, from the right, from conservatives, to say that all we want is for you to be the person in charge of your life. Mm -hmm. Even if you want to elect folks who might have your best interests and who want to use your, the resources that we give them through our tax dollars to micromanage you, you are the best uh, decision maker of your of your paycheck of what your family does of where you go to school and how you educate your children and I think if we can focus that message and pair it with a good machine that that you and uh, and others have been uh, you know pointedly talking about I think there's a way that we can win 2020 down the uh, you know up and down the ballot whether it's with the presidency whether it's you know getting back some of these congressional districts that, that we've lost uh, in this past election um, I think with, with that ground game and with that messaging, uh, we have a bright future ahead of us. We'll let that be the final word. Abdi Mohammed, nice. thank you for joining the Republican Roundtable. Thank you for having me. This has been the Republican Roundtable. I'm your host, Max Reimer. Until next time.